In this tutorial, I'll show you how to turn a still image into a moving image using Adobe After Effects. Stay tuned. What's up, survivalists? It's Jay from Team WJ here to enhance your animations and tell your stories. If you're new here, I make Minecraft animation tutorials every Monday, so make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to not miss any uploads. If you're not, welcome back. I'm going to show you how to turn a still image into a moving image using Adobe After Effects and a technique known as the Parallax Effect. Let's get into it. Alright, so no webcam today, but we'll be using this image that I created on episode 16 of the Levislear Production Diary. You can watch that live stream right here to know exactly how I made this image. But keep in mind that before you start making this effect, you do need two prerequisites. You're going to need just a plain background with no characters on it, and this is called a clean plate, as well as having the image itself. If you don't have a clean plate, watch this video up here to teach you how to remove stuff from your images to create clean plates using Adobe Photoshop. Let's fire up After Effects. For those who are new to After Effects, I'll explain the interface really quickly. Over here, we have the bins. This is where you store all your project files. In the main menu here, we have the composition window where you can move stuff around and do whatever you need with the footage. And down over here, we have the timeline. This is where you can scrub through time. Select the images that we want. So for me, it'll be this and the background, the clean plate. And we'll just drag this into the bins window. Select both your final image and your clean plate and drag those into the timeline. Make sure the timeline says none down over here. This is gonna prompt the new composition from selection window. Make sure it's on single composition and set the duration to about five seconds. Then hit okay. Now right here, it's very important that you set the frame rate correct. Right click on your composition and go to composition settings up over here. By default for me, my frame rate was set to 25. But for you, it may be 24 or 30. It seems that I've got a really funny aspect ratio as well. So let's fix that. It should be 1920 by 1080 for a 1080p video. Let's hit okay once that's done. And of course, mine's gonna look a bit funky because of the wrong aspect ratio. So let me resize that by clicking on the corner pin over here, holding shift and just expanding that a little bit. You probably won't have that problem. I think that's just something that I have to deal with. Cool, so you're gonna notice that the clean plate is actually on top of our final image. So let's click on the clean plate and drag that underneath our final image. And that's gonna bring our characters back up. After Effects works on layers. What this means is that if we look down in the timeline, we can see two different layers here. The top layer is what's gonna be shown on top of the bottom layer. So if the bottom is on top, and you can see the clean plate is on top of the, uh, the foreground. We don't want that. So make sure they're on the right layers. So I'm gonna select the foreground layer, hit G, and this will bring up the pen tool. What this allows me to do is draw a mask around an object. So let's say I wanna mask this character up front out. I can simply draw a mask around him, and this will crop everything else except the uh, except the things inside the mask. So I can move this by itself, right? So let's hit Control Z to undo everything, or Command Z if you're on a Mac. Hit G again, bring back that pen tool. And this time I'm gonna draw a more detailed mask around this one character that I want to make move. We're gonna jump into time-lapse territory here just to make things faster. So guys, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to stay notified whenever I upload a new video. All these tutorials are meant to help you guys enhance your animations. So if you'd like to do that, I'd love to see you join our survivalist community as well. All right, so we've reached the final point in the mask. If you wanna shut it off, simply reach your, your pen tool back to the origin point and you can see this little circle around your pen tool. Click and that will draw a mask around your final point. You notice that everything else disappears, the shadow and the character in, in the background. That's fine, but let's bring them back. Select our layer down here, this is the foreground layer. Hit Control D to duplicate or Command D if you're on a Mac. Hit M to bring out the mask options and change the blending mode here from Add to Subtract. And this will bring everything back. Now it's a good idea to start naming stuff because we've got three files of very similar names. I'm gonna name the top layer Ulfrin because the character in the background over here is called Ulfrin. I'm gonna name the second layer over here Arkosh because that's the name of this character up front. And I'm gonna name the back BG for background. I'm actually gonna drag the Ulfrin layer below the Arkosh layer so that we have Arkosh right up front. It's a good idea to probably save your work here in case anything happens to the file, but I'm just gonna press forward because now it's time to actually make this little image move. I'm gonna select the Ulfrin layer and click this little pick whip over here to parent that to the BG. So we'll just click and drag that over to the BG, let go. And this parent and link option should say 3BG. What that basically does is parent the Ulfrin layer to the background. So whatever I do to the background, like moving it around, you can see that Ulfrin there, he actually sticks on. So now let's select Arkosh, hit P 
and this will bring out the position drop down and we're gonna click on this little time stopwatch over here. This is gonna create our first keyframe. If you guys come from an animation background, you already know what keyframes do, but if not, I'll explain them later. Hit S, this is gonna drop down scale and do the same thing. Hit this little stopwatch, that's gonna create a keyframe right up on the frame one. So make sure your uh, timeline scrubber over here is actually on the first frame. Now let's jump forward to the last frame because this is five seconds. And over here in the scale, I'm simply going to drag this number up a tad bit. Alternatively, if you'd like a nice round number, you can click on it and type in 110, for example. And that's gonna automatically add a keyframe over here. You can see keyframes indicated by these little diamond icons. So basically on the first frame, this keyframe tells After Effects to scale my Arkosh layer to 102.3%. On the final frame, it tells After Effects to scale it to 110%. And in between, it's gonna automatically calculate the scale. That's how you create a basic animation. We're gonna do the same for position. We're gonna hit P. That's gonna bring down a drop down menu move our cursor up to the last frame and simply reposition them. Now, I know I want the feet not to move, so I want to make sure that our feet stay within the shadow area. Just gonna hit V on the keyboard. This is gonna allow us to move our layer and just move him back into position. So here's what we've basically done. Now I'm actually gonna scooch him forward by a tad bit because he does move, right? So let's scoot him forward like so. Right. So now let's select the background layer, not the Ulfren layer because the Ulfren layer is parented. So anything that we do to the background will happen to the Ulfren. Let's hit S, make that stopwatch, hit P, make that stopwatch, move to the last frame. Now we're gonna scale this up, but not as much as the Arkosh layer. So the Arkosh layer got scaled up to 110. We could make this one 105, say, or uh, 109, but anything smaller than 110. We're gonna hit P to change the position, and we're gonna move this so that the uh, shadow is not so buggy. Like so. We're also gonna scoot this the other way. So because Arkosh moved left, we're gonna move this one to the right a tad bit, just like that. And now if we play it, it looks like Arkosh is moving. We can actually make this effect even stronger by changing the position and the scale. So for the scale of Arkosh, I'm gonna bump this up to 120 maybe, and this is gonna make him a lot bigger. So it makes him look like he moved a lot further. Play it and see how it looks. So he moves a bit too much there. Let's change the scale of the background as well to 115 maybe. Let me push this back a bit more. So aside from the shadows maybe being a little bit buggy, we actually have a pretty nice effect going on and it looks like he's moving. Now I'm actually gonna go clean up these shadows here, but if you have a good clean plate, you won't have to do this. All right, so I cleaned up the shadows on my part. Let's try to also add some blur in the background. And because we've isolated Arkosh from the background, it's actually really easy to do. Let's create an adjustment layer by clicking Control, Alt, and Y. Let's rename the adjustment layer to DOF Blur. That stands for Depth of Field Blur. I'm gonna use the Effects Console over here and type in Gaussian Blur. Now you probably don't have the Effects Console, so use this Effects and Presets panel over here. If you don't have this panel, go up to Windows and choose Effects and Presets, and that's gonna pop up this panel for you to choose from. And just type in Gaussian Blur into there. But the Video Copilot Effects Console makes that a lot easier. So you can search that up, Video Copilot Effects Console. And we're gonna drag this blur layer underneath the Arkosh layer so that it doesn't blur Arkosh. We can simply crank this up, make sure repeat edge pixels is turned on. Now you're gonna see that that blurs everything, including the foreground, and that's not what we're really, what we're really looking for. So we can use G again to draw a mask around the places where we don't want it to blur out. So that, for me, that would look something along the lines of um, that, I think. You're, you're gonna notice that that's the only thing that's being blurred, which is the opposite of what we want. So hit M and change the blend mode of the mask to subtract. That's gonna flip it. You're gonna also notice that this mask creates a very sharp definition between blur and not blur. So we can fix that by using some feathering. Select the depth of field blur layer, hit F on the keyboard. That's gonna bring up the mask feathering options, which we are going to smooth out these corners. So if we drag this pixel, you see how that uh, smooth everything out. Uh, I'm gonna go around 40, that, that looks good to me. And don't forget to use the pick whip to drag this to the background. Now we play this. You can see that the background is blurred, but the foreground is not. 
As a final touch, you may be wanting to add a little bit of camera shake to make things feel a bit more realistic. To do this is actually pretty simple. Let's do Control, Alt, Shift, and Y. This is gonna create a new null object. Alternatively, you can go up to Layer, New, Null Object right over here. Let's name the null object Camera Move. Now let's select every single layer underneath camera move by clicking and dragging in the empty space. Let's right click and hit pre-compose. And I'm gonna name this pre-comp move. So now that we have the move layer, if we wanna change anything in the main image itself, double click on the move layer and this will allow us to change anything here. We can go back to, to the second layer over here. I'm actually gonna name the second layer uh, by going into the project file over here. The second layer is not named correctly. So I'm gonna right click, hit rename and name this um, shape. Right, so now let's parent the move layer to the camera move by clicking on the pick whip and moving the camera move. So now whenever we move the camera move layer, the main move layer also follows along. Let's hit P on camera move and hold down Alt while clicking on the stopwatch. This is gonna drop down our expressions menu. You can use this little play button over here to choose what expressions to use. And expressions are basically codes in, in After Effects. Go over to property and select wiggle. And this is gonna basically wiggle the position which gives the illusion of a camera shape. We're gonna delete everything after amp and close it off with a bracket. We're gonna change frequency and amp to something like two and two, All right? Just an example. Do not hit enter, click away from the expression menu to close it. And now if we hit play, we're gonna start seeing uh, a little bit of wiggle. If you want more shake, simply increase these numbers on the wiggle. If you want less shake, decrease the numbers. You can also use percentages and, and, and decimal points. So like 1.1, for example, would be a, would, might be something that you're looking for. Now, finally, to export this, go to our render queue. If you don't see render queue for whatever reason, go up to window and down over here, you can see render queue. Drag our shake composition into the render queue. We're gonna change the output module from lossless to H.264 if you have it, or QuickTime if you don't. You can leave everything else on default. I'm gonna change the output audio to output off because this has no audio. Hit OK. And this is gonna automatically change your output file to shake.mov, so let's click on that. And let's make sure that we're in the right folder. So I'm gonna go into uh, our Love Sleer folder here and um, promo, Love Concept Art, new, F1, S2, move. That's what I'm gonna name it. Hit save. Make sure you save your file before you hit render. Once that's done, hit render and just give it a bit to process. You're gonna hear that sound once it's done. And we can minimize this, go back to our actual folder and we can see our final output. Here's what it looks like. Hey, do you want to learn animation but don't know where to start? Why not check out my Beginners to Advanced playlist designed to help you improve your animations right here. If this video has helped you, don't forget to share it and help your friends too. I'm a YouTuber trying to influence and change Minecraft animations for the better while working on my own animated series, Levislear. You can play a massive role in the development of Levislear by watching more of my videos or checking out my Patreon. With that said and done, this has been Che from Team WNJ to improve your animations and tell your stories. Cheers!